Hotel. I'm already there, Leonid. I'm already there. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Skull Goes Wide. I'm Kevin the Skull Anderson. How are you? Before I get into my main review for this episode, there are actually several things that I'd like to discuss. First is, of course, the mysterious Mr. Inner's technocracy which I have watched all seven episodes of to my knowledge and they're all really good and the eighth one's supposed to release pretty soon to YouTube it's gonna be the last one in the in the chronology and technocracy is not only not only an informative show it is an interesting show it is a great show. It is an entertaining show. Granted, it does have a few swear words in it for people who are politically correct. And then you have to take into consideration the fact that this show points out the facts that, unfortunately, most people are either too complacent to or too scared to. Technocracy is an amazing insight into the world of all of humanity's biggest technology corporations and their respective violations of antitrust laws. You know, we're talking John Davidson Rockefeller levels of stuff here. You understand? So go check that out. Go check that out from the mysterious Mr. Enter. And I guarantee you, there's going to be a compilation of all eight of those episodes packed into one video quite a while from now. Quite sooner than you would think. But it's going to be up soon. The last episode and then the compilation, obviously. Depending on how that goes. The second that I would like to discuss with you guys is a show that I think you all are familiar with. I am talking about Spin to Win. I don't think you guys realize this, but Spin to Win is the kind of show that brings excitement and lots and lots of money potentially to be given away right so you have this huge board that you spin a peg on it's upwards it's vertical instead of the horizontal one you find on Wheel of Fortune but it's a vertical board that you spin and whatever peg it lands on is what you win or what you lose there are certain rounds in which when you spin an extra layer that was previously money related goes to back to zero and then another one that goes to one million so you spin to win whatever you win or lose whatever money amount is on there and then you're made an offer to either take the money or of course you can choose to keep going Shockingly, this is a typical Fox show that I find to be given the five-minute curse. Why do I say five-minute curse? Because, spin to win, don't get me wrong, it's an exciting show. But, five minutes before it's supposed to end, it cuts to a commercial. That means that Spin to Win is one of the most 
exciting shows, but the excitement dies when five minutes before the show is supposed to end, they cut to a commercial. So it's like, okay, we got five minutes to work with here. We got to go to a commercial. We got to go to a commercial because it's five minutes before the end of the show. And then we got to have this, this ridiculous closing package because we don't have any more time left. The fuck is wrong with you guys, Fox? You got a perfect show and spin to win. You don't need to go on a commercial five minutes before the show ends. What the hell? My god. I don't understand that. I don't get it. You know, they're one of the only new shows on TV that's a game show that goes to a commercial. FIVE MINUTES BEFORE THE END OF THE SHOW! Unless you're Match Game, or The Price is Right, or Will of Fortune, or Jeopardy, you can't be doing that! <laughs> I can't stop! Are you kidding me? You, you can't possibly be joking. I mean, my god, man. A show that gives away potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars per episode and you have to cut to a Gundam fucking commercial five minutes before the show ends. What the hell? That doesn't make sense! That makes no sense whatsoever! You understand? And now we're gonna get to our main review of the show and I'm talking about that one episode that my friend Whitney McLaughlin of DeviantArt suggested to me it's this episode where Mr. Ratburn gets married to a man and the kids are subject to this announcement from Mr. Ratburn who apparently is a homosexual now Not that there's anything wrong with marrying someone of your own gender. It's your life. You can do whatever you want with it. What you do is your choice. But anyway, I'm not going to spoil it too much for you. I'm going to do some research into the show. And by the time this video uploads, and by the time this next segment comes around, I will have already done my research on the show. St All right. I know this is probably going to get a lot of flack from the gay community. It's okay. I don't mind the criticism. I'm fine with it. But here's the thing. Gay marriages are becoming more common in animation now, and that's okay. I find absolutely nothing wrong with it. I find nothing all that bad about it. And at the end of the day, I don't mind it. I know people myself who are gay. You understand? So here's the thing. Alright? Here's the thing. When you take all this into consideration, when you take it all in and soak it all up for what it's worth, you have to consider one of the most important things in a children's TV show 
is to not expose the kids to gay weddings within cartoons. I cannot stress that enough. I'll give you an example. Alright? I'll give you an example. So, there's this article on pride.com discussing said situation and I'm going to read this verbatim all right I'm going to read both of these articles both the CBS article and the pride article verbatim and I'm going to compare the two and give my thoughts on it. I'm going to read the Pride article first. This is an article, of course, written by someone who is a part of the gay community, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if he is or not, but his name is Rafi Ermak. Queer representation in children's animation has been getting better and better as the years go by. While it's nice to see so many new inclusive titles premiering on so many networks, we wish some of our old school faves would also introduce queer characters as well. It looks like Arthur this time may have just heard our prayers, meaning the gay community's prayers. The long-running public broadcasting service kids series airing since 1996, just confirmed that Mr. Nigel Ratburn, Arthur Reed's cake-loving third grade Lakewood elementary teacher, is in fact queer. In the season 22 opener, Mr. Ratburn and the special someone, viewers finally got to see Mr. Ratburn marry his husband. And it's literally, if you're into that, the cutest thing ever, but only if you're into that. While current Arthur viewers are probably a little too young for Twitter, when OG fans grew up with Arthur in the 90s and 20 nothings found out about this, they freaked the hell out. Yeah. I just went there. Don't ask me why. Now I'm going to read the CBS article. Season 22 of Arthur kicked off with a special wedding episode. By the way, this is written by Kalen O'Kane, by the way. May the 21st, 2019, 8.09 a.m. for CBS News. Season 22 of the Arthur kicked off with a special wedding episode that had people across the nation talking. However, kids in Alabama did not get to see the May 13th episode in which Arthur's teacher, I just burped, excuse me for that, Mr. Radburn marries his partner. That's because it was never aired. Alabama Public Television chose not to air the episode, according to AL.com. Instead, Arthur fans in the state saw a rerun episode. The decision was made back in April when the local PBS stations were notified of the content of the episode. Mike McKenzie Director of Programming at Alabama Public Television told AL.com, Columbia Broadcasting System News has reached out to McKenzie and several other people at APT for comment, that's apt for short, apt is short for Alabama Public Television, and is awaiting response. McKenzie told AL.com that Apt has no plans to air the episode at a later date because parents have trusted Alabama Public Television for more than 50 years to provide children's programs that entertain, educate, and inspire. 
McKenzie said in an email to the station. He also furthered his statement by saying, more importantly, although we strongly encourage parents to watch television with their children and talk about what they've learned afterwards, parents trust that their children can watch APT without their supervision, he said. We also know that children who are younger than the target audience for Arthur also watch the program. In the season 22 premiere, Arthur and his friends worry their teacher is going to marry an uptight woman, but when they get to the wedding ceremony, they learn he is marrying a man. They are relieved and happy for their teacher. It is not the first time Apt has pulled an episode of the children's show from air. In a 2005 episode, Arthur's friend Buster meets a child with two mothers. Abt did not air that episode either. At the time, then-director Alan Pizzato told AL.com, Our feeling is that we basically have a trust with parents about our programming. The programming does not fit into that, said Alan Pizzato, then-director of Alabama Public Television. If parents in Alabama want their kids to see the season 22 premiere episode, Mr. Ratburn and the Special Someone is available on PBS's website. I'm going to compare this article and the one I read previously to you, and I'm going to tell you what I think. The Pride article that I read is not a bad article by any means. It's just a little too biased. And when you have a little bit too much bias in your article, it tends to have some sort of effect that comes across as being that this article is one-sided. In the meantime, the CBS News article, you know, CBS, which stands for complete bullshit, by the way. The only thing good about CBS nowadays is their soap operas and their local news. And Will of Fortune and Jeopardy. And Price is Right. That's it. Those are the only things I look forward to if ever I watch CBS. But this article in particular does not reek of complete bullshit. This one has a surprising amount of truth in it, which is actually shocking to me. Because it's not as biased as the Pride.com article, but it also has a more off-kilter take to it. And by off-kilter, I mean balanced, but then again, hardly any of their articles are like that anyway, right? I'm going to read another article for you about this gay wedding, alright? I'm going to read another article. Now, Mark Brown, the author of the Arthur book series and TV show, this is according to a writer who works for the Huffington Post. And if I am not mistaken, the person responsible for writing said article is Curtis M. Wong. Published May the 22nd, 2019, 320 EST PM. The creator of Arthur has vowed to defend his decision to depict a same-sex marriage on the iconic children's program to anybody who wants to talk about it. The season 22 premiere titled Mr. Ratburn and the Special Someone revealed that one of its characters, Mr. Ratburn, is gay. The elementary school teacher, a rat tied the knot, 
with a male aardvark named Patrick in the episode. Although many Arthur fans responded favorably on social media, a number of right-wing conservative pundits and groups lambasted the show. So clearly this is probably a literal article, or not literal, but liberal article. Meanwhile, Alabama Public Television went a step further by yanking that episode from the airways entirely, opting to broadcast a repeat of an older episode instead. In a People interview published Tuesday, Arthur creator Mark Brown appeared taken aback by the controversy, saying he was very disappointed by Alabama Public Television's decision. By the way, this is the same state where you're allowed to marry your cousin. The same state that's one of the worst in education. North Carolina, my state, is probably one of the worst in education. So I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. I'm really proud of that episode, Mark Brown explained, and I will defend it to anybody who wants to talk about it. The thrice-time Emmy Award winner, three times he won an Emmy said his decision to include a same-sex wedding on the show was born out of his interests in making viewers from all walks of life feel represented. Why shouldn't their teacher marry another man? We all know people who are gay, who are trans, and it's something that's socially acceptable, he said. Why is there this discomfort that it takes a leap into our natural national media? He continued by saying, I don't want children or people who are different to feel excluded. That's not the kind of world we want to live in. And we want children to be educated so that they can see there's not just one type of family. A PBS spokesperson echoed Brown's sentiments, telling people that we believe it is important to represent the wide array of adults in the lives of children who look to PBS kids every day. It isn't the first time one of Brown's creations have ruffled feathers with regard to LGBTQ inclusive content. In 2005, the author spinoff, Postcards from Buster, lost a number of corporate sponsors over an episode that featured a pair of lesbian mothers. This was 14 years ago, by the way. At the time of this recording, this is 2019. PBS ultimately decided not to distribute said episode when Margaret Spellings, then Education Secretary under President Colonel Clusterfuck himself, George W. Bush, whose father was the original Colonel Clusterfuck, by the way, expressed strong and very serious concerns with regard to its themes. With Arthur making headlines for same-sex union 14 years later, Brown told people he was reminded of the postcards from Buster fallout. We have a very powerful, we have a very powerful medium in television coupled with animation, he said. It's probably one of the most reductive forms of entertainment and education we can use to reach a child, he said. Why not use it in a positive way, he asked. Now I'm going to pair the Pride and the CBS article to the Huffington article and go into that. Pride, of course, dealt with the bare bones of the information. CBS News further clarified and added along to the information, albeit in a very decent effort but not as decently as I would have hoped. The Huffington Post, however, the Huffington Post is a little different. It looks at it from Mark Brown's perspective, despite it being by someone not named Mark Brown. Now, granted, the only thing that I discredit about this particular Huffington Post article is that a number of right-wing conservative pundits and groups lambasted the show because I could almost guarantee you that just as many liberal pundits and groups like the corporate Nazi network, nothing but chumps 
NBC, you know, ABC, which has gone to hell and back so many times since they started airing that god-awful talk show, The View. That's the only thing I can take away from that. Everything else is pretty much spot on. But yeah, there you have it. You have the gay man's perspective, meaning someone from within the LGBTQ community. You have the CBS perspective. You have Mark Brown's perspective. And then you have my perspective. Four perspectives. And they all connect in what way? I'll tell you. They connect because they relate to the same topic. Tell me that's not worth talking about, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Now tell me that's not powerful, huh? Now I myself have not watched Arthur in a long, long, long time. Nor do I intend to. But when I was growing up in the late 90s and early 20 nothings, I was a fan of the show. I grew up watching that show. And it has evolved so much throughout the years that it's been on the air since 1996. So just to say the least, this is in fact, from what I've heard, an episode that you should check out and then you can judge for yourself and tell me what you think about it in the comments box below. In the meantime, this was a crest this was a request suggested to me by my friend Whitney McLaughlin, in case you're wondering. So this goes out to her. This episode is dedicated specifically to her request. And of course, the two other prior reviews that I did in this episode, namely Spin to Win and that other show that I forgot about. What was that show? I forget. I'll look back at it later. But anyway, that's pretty much that. Have a good day, everybody. See you on the next one. And in the meantime, I gotta do it.